What's up y'all, it's Mr. Canada. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to write the domain and the range from a word problem. This will be split into two parts again. I'll be focusing on one video on just discrete word problems, and in a different video, I will just focus on continuous word problems. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes when we're doing word problems, they can sometimes be the easiest, or they can sometimes be the hardest problems we work with. Not because sometimes the math in it is hard, but because sometimes we have to do a lot of reading and a lot of dissecting of the information that's given to us. So sometimes the word problems can be as short as a few sentences, but sometimes they can be as long as a paragraph or several sentences. And it's a very important skill to learn on how we can just read the problem and take away the information that's important to us in order to answer the problem. So that's hopefully my goal with this video is to hopefully start developing those skills so that we can practice them over time. So what's the secret to doing well with word problems? So sometimes um, what I like to do is whenever I'm reading a word problem is to circle, underline, highlight any information that looks important or is important to solving the problem that is being asked. Uh, another thing that I like to ask myself is, since we are talking about domain and range, is kind of reminding myself what domain is and what range is. So domain is all of the X values or all of the inputs, while range is all of the Y values or all of the outputs. And remember that if they use F of X or function notation, remember that's the same thing as the output or as Y. And lastly, I have to ask myself, is the problem that I'm working with in the context of domain and range discrete or continuous? Because then at the end, that's gonna help me understand how to write the domain in the range. And depending on what type I'm working with, sometimes it's more work and sometimes it's less work. And finally, it's always good to draw. Keep yourself a little doodle about how to, in order to visualize the problem that you are working with. So um, the big idea overall is we wanna be using domain to find the range, basically taking any of the inputs that are given to us and establish a connection so that we can find those outputs in the problem. But that's a lot of information to, to, to absorb all at once. So let's just look at our first example and sort of um, start understanding the types of questions we need to ask ourselves when we're working with these. So here's our first example. Our first example is the total cost to buy uniforms for the players on a volleyball team can be found using the function y equals 34.95x plus 6.25 where X is the number of uniforms by. If there are at least eight players, but no more than 12 players on the volleyball team, then what is the domain and the range of this situation? So we're trying to answer the question of what is the domain and the range? So let's go back and see if we can underline any information that would be super useful to us in finding the domain and the range. So one thing to keep in mind is uh, domain is X. So it's important to look for something that tells you that X is this and then likewise tell you something that Y is that for the range. So when we're reading through this here, they tell you that the total cost in dollars to buy the uniforms can be found using this function. And they tell you that it's Y equals. So this is gonna help you find the range. And more specifically, this is the total cost. So Y is the total cost. And the equation that we're using is Y equals 34.95 uh, x plus 625 okay and then they tell me where x is the number of uniforms bought so that means right off the bat the domain has something to do with the number of uniforms so notice how we're slowly starting to dissect the information that's given to us here and finally, if there are at least eight players, but no more than 12 players, then the question is, what is the domain range? Okay, so how do we start taking all of this information and, and uh, establishing a connection? Well, what we just did is that we did the first two steps. We underlined anything that was important, and we said that the domain was this, and the range was that, in terms of the words or the context of the problem. The only thing we have to ask ourselves now is, is this a discrete problem or is this a continuous problem? The easiest ways to think about it in, in this way, continuous problems will usually have some kind of mention of time in it, like the number of seconds, the number of hours, the number of minutes. Since this problem has no mention of time, 
we can automatically assume that this will be a discrete problem. So this is going to be discrete. Now, is there another reason that we can establish this as a discrete problem? In this case, we're talking about x is the number of uniforms. We can always establish discrete or continuous based on what x is. In this case, since x is uniforms, you cannot buy half a uniform, a quarter of a uniform, a third of a uniform. You can only buy whole number of uniforms. So that's another good reason as to why this is going to be discrete and not continuous. Okay, so now, now that we know this is discrete, how do we actually start doing the work? Well, think of it this way. You're trying to figure out how many uniforms you should buy for this entire team. And they tell you the cost of those uniforms. Um, one thing that you should keep in mind is, is there a starting point or is there a limit to how many uniforms or number of objects we can buy? In this problem, they tell you that your team has at least eight players, but no more than 12 players. That means you have eight people standing in line hoping to pick up a uniform, but you can't have anything less than that. At the same time, you cannot have a maximum of more, you can't have more than 12 players. So that means that whenever you're doing this, I would start it off this way. X is equal to eight. So then I'm telling myself that the smallest number I'm allowed to start with is the number eight because I have at least eight players and not anything smaller than that. So then we wanna ask ourselves, okay, how much is the price for eight uniforms? Well, this is where we can use a calculator for this. They did give us an equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the decimals calculator that's right above me to calculate that. So 34.95, I'm putting parentheses here because I'm plugging in the number of uniforms for X. So here I'm plugging in eight uniforms and then I'm gonna add 6.25. And notice what the total cost is, $285.85. So this is going to be 285 with 85. Just making sure that I, that I double check that correctly and there you go. So this is how we're starting to form the work for it. The number of uniforms, we plug it into the formula that's given to us, then we get the total price. So then this right here is gonna be the place where all your domain is gonna be, all your X's are gonna be, while this column over here is gonna be where all of the Y's are gonna go, where your range is gonna be located. Now, should I stop here? No, because we wanna figure out the prices for each for each player. So how much would it cost if we had nine players, 10 players, 11 players, 12 players, but not go beyond 12 because we don't have more than 12 players. So we remember that domain is all of the possible X's, ranges all of the possible Y's. So I have to make sure I get absolutely everything and not miss a single number. So that means I have to figure it out for nine, have to figure it out for 10, 11, and for 12. So that means you're going to be plugging these in into this formula and then calculating it one by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just plug these in. I'm going to do a little bit of movie magic and we're going to see how the work works out at the very end. And there you have it. So these are all of the X's. So this is all the number of players that you have on your team. And this is the prices for all of the uniforms you would have to buy if you had this number of players. And remember, we're not, we're not worried about anything that's before eight, and we're also not worried about what's after 12 because we don't have that number of players. So then the only thing you have to do here is you have to keep in mind this. The only reason why we had to calculate all of these numbers is because it is discrete. Remember that discrete is separate and distinct, which means we have to write down every single number, every single X, every single Y that we are capable of, of working out. So just to finish this off, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go ahead and write all of our X's for domain and write down all of our Y's for our range. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, this is 285 and 425.65. And then we are done with this problem. So. Discrete problems do require a little bit of work, but a lot of it is just writing down the numbers. But most of the actual calculations could be done with a calculator or by hand.
calculator would probably be a little bit niftier and a little bit faster. So let's go ahead to one more. Let's look at one more example, and let's follow the exact same steps we did before. So a set of weights includes a four-pound barbell and six pairs of weights. Each, each pair of weights weighs 20 pounds. If X pairs of plates are added to the barbell, the total weight of the barbell and plates in pounds can be represented by f of x equals 20x plus 4. And they're asking us to write the domain in the range of this situation. Okay, so same kind of thing. Let's go ahead and read it one more time. Uh, they're telling us that a set of weights includes a 4-pound barbell and 6 pairs of weights. Each pair of weights weighs 20 pounds, so that's pretty heavy. x is the number of pairs of plates, and the total weight of the barbell could be represented by this function 20x plus 4. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, let's identify what x and y is. In this case, they tell you x is the number of plates. Now, we're not talking about like the plates you eat off of, but basically they're these giant metal donut things that you put at the end of the, like this stick, basically the barbell, to make it heavier. Um, and then they tell you that the total weight, y, is represented by this function. So that means y is the total weight and they tell us that the function that we're using is, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to y. y is equal to 20x plus 4. So same kind of thing. We want to now ask ourselves, is it discrete or continuous? They don't talk about time here. And we're talking about separate pairs of weights. So this is clearly going to be a discrete problem again. Which means, unfortunately, we have to work it out one by one. So let's just do a couple of setup first, and then we can expedite the process here. So basically, how does this look like? How do we even start thinking about this problem? Well, think of it this way. Think of it as your dude over here who has really like long arms is just carrying this barbell. So it's just basically this pole, okay? And the idea is that this pole, this barbell, weighs four pounds. So you have to think about that. At the start of the weightlifting, do you have any weights on it already? No. Right now, you're just lifting that pole up like uh, like nobody's business. So that means that the starting number of plates at the very beginning is zero, but that doesn't mean you're not carrying anything. That means you have some weight on there. The weight is still four, because that's four pounds. Okay, now what we're gonna do is just basically ask ourselves, for every pair of weight that we add, how much heavier does it get? Well, basically, let's go ahead and draw that out. If I add one pair of weight here and one pair of weight over here, ooh, now it's heavy, right? I have, I'm adding extra weight to it, so I'm going to have to use more of my muscles. So that means that when x is equal to one pair, one pair of plates, I add a set, my total weight gets heavier. How much heavier does it actually get? Well, in this case, every single time I add a plate to it, I'm adding 20 pounds. So this is going to be 24. So for every extra plate that I add, I am basically adding 20 more pounds up to a limit. Now, what is my limit? Well, how many pairs of weights do we have? We only have six pairs, so we cannot go above that number because we didn't buy that many or more than that. So all you have to think about is, well, how much more weight am I adding each time? So I'm going to go ahead and set myself up to success here. Basically, if I add another set, I'm basically making this a bigger, thicker circle over here. I'm basically adding 20 more pounds. So now this is 44. And every single time I add more and more weights to that, this is getting heavier and heavier, but this dude's muscles are basically getting bigger and bigger. See, look at those guns right there. So let's go ahead and keep adding 20 to this because we are adding 20 each time. Now, this right here, is your all of your x's so that's your domain this right here is all of your y's so that's your range so now the last thing we're going to do is basically write down all of our x's and all of our y's to finish this problem off so this is going to be 0 1 2 and then 124 and again we have to do this process because it is discrete so let's recap so whenever you're reading a word problem it's important that you read it once understand what the question is and then go back and circle any information that could help you uh, answer that question.
Ask yourself, remind yourself what domain is and what range is and look for any hints in the word problem in, in terms of any items that could represent that. And then finally, ask yourself, is it discrete or is it continuous? And the easiest way to remember that is continuous deals with time only and discrete is just whole number of, of objects. Now, once you get through this, those three questions, now the tough part comes in in establishing the actual work that will help you get from the domain to the range. And sometimes they'll give you an equation and sometimes they'll give you um, just a general idea about how much of everything is worth when you're doing your calculations. Well, I hope you guys learned something new today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Algebra 1 videos. As always, please take care and I'll see you guys next time.